Delilah. God damn it. Hey everybody, it's Chantal High, Kendo's Dating Coach. We are doing a super special uh, talk tonight. I have Sylvia here. She is amazing. She is local. She creates all kinds of amazing pages on Facebook. Uh, starting with the FOC free or cheap in Kitchener and from there she went into a total folk life orgasmania and started creating all these incredible pages so folk life for singles uh, folk life for spirit um, she is such a super amazing local celebrity does lots of fundraising really likes to take people who have super passionate projects and elevate them and toss them out into the community make sure everybody knows about them and this is how I happen to come across Kayla Kayla Kyla. is son of a bitch I do this every time Kyla 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 That's all right here god damn it so Kyla is actually going to come on live with us and she's going to ask her her single woman questions which I know there's going to be a lot of women who are going to have questions that she is. I love having this conversation. Kyla, how are you? Good. Hi. Yay. Okay, Kyla. So I've done the whole intro thing. And okay. what we don't know is anything about you. So do you want to tell us some, you know, details about what it is that, you know, kind of a little bit about who you are, but a lot about what you want to know, a lot about any confusion that you have or any problems that you have with dating? Well, um, I've been single five years. I haven't really had a relationship I've dated, um, but nothing serious. Uh, just I enjoy being single. I've gotten to a point where I don't mind being alone. I, uh, I have four kids, but I share custody. So every other week I don't have my, my little ones. So I have lots of free time. I have an amazing community of friends. Um, I am work. I'm just, I'm busy and I have great friends. So, yeah, I, I haven't really dated and I'm very, very picky. Uh, I think that's actually one of my problems. <laughs> I, I don't want to settle. I have very high standards. I, I, I'm happy alone, so I don't really need to fill my time with anybody right now. Um, yeah, I think that's my main problem is being too picky and having too higher standards and not wanting to compromise, not wanting a relationship, not wanting somebody in my space right now. Okay, so let me ask you this, because I really find that this is like the absolute most important question, um, because I hear you saying two things, which is I'm single and I'm happy. Um, but I'm, but I'm looking for someone. So I'd be happy to have somebody. Yeah. I'm not actively looking. Um, but if somebody comes into my life and we're both ready for a relationship, I'd be fine with that too. Yeah. Okay. So I actually really like the place that you're in and maybe you're too picky Maybe you're picky enough, but you're just not getting out there enough. And so, I, I don't... yeah, I, I think that's the thing. When I'm out, I focus on who I'm with. I don't pay attention. I don't flirt. I don't um, try and get guys' attention. Um, I, I, I don't, I, I'm probably missing opportunities, to be honest. Uh, yeah, that, that's probably a, a problem that I have. So on a scale of one to 10 and, and without losing any of your happiness or satisfaction, how much do you want to be in a relationship? I'm going to say three. So I, I, I don't feel I have the time to commit to it right now. 
Um, I would, I enjoy being able to spend one or two nights every couple of weeks with somebody. I, I, I want somebody that is as motivated, ambitious, and is as busy as I am and is able to understand my busyness. Yeah. And I don't want somebody that's needy and needs me more than what I have time for that. Yeah. And you definitely don't want anybody insecure because that's exactly the personality that would be dragging you backwards. However, exactly. if you do meet somebody that, uh, that is independent, has stuff going on, supports you. It's actually great to have a partner in crime that is willing to uh, work with whatever you're doing in your life. It's amazing what a team can do. So yes, that's and that would that would be great. That would be wonderful yeah. to meet somebody like that. I am attracted yeah. to somebody that's just as ambitious and motivated and goal oriented as I am. So I know that they're going to be probably just as busy as I am. I think you want somebody like my husband. Because... <laughs> oh, I'll be honest. Cousins, yeah, hey. you know. Cousins but... brother, anyone? <laughs> right? If, if, if I could clone the man, if I could clone the man and sell copies to all of you <laughs> single women, I would make a mint in like no time whatsoever because word of mouth, <laughs> yeah. word of mouth would spread like wildfire but the quality we got here but this is the beauty of a real man like I, I'm telling you ladies my template for the definition of what a real slash good man is stemmed from knowing this person and then being out in the world and faced with a bazillion men day in and day out and studying their behaviors compared to this one and I really started to discern the difference between what I call guys who are selfish short-term thinkers, which is fine, by the way, I do not judge that. I've been a girl myself. Uh, and <laughs> men who are generous long-term thinkers. And that's the type that you are looking for, for sure, because yeah. that's the place where you're in. You are in woman mode, which means you are in the same frame of mind as a man. And that is definitely what you're looking for. And one of the things that I actually really appreciate about my relationship with my husband, who is just an absolutely incredible man, is I do a lot of things solo and it has zero impact on our relationship. And it has zero impact on either of us because there's so much trust within our relationship and there's so much support that anytime one of us is doing something that takes us away from the other, the connection that we have, that spiritual connection that I talk about when I say divide us into three parts, your biological body, your logical mind, your spiritual connection, when you rise mm -hmm. above your biological impulses and use your logical mind to find the partner that you're looking for, which is the one that's going to suit you because he's in the same state of mind that you're in, you have that spiritual connection where no matter what the distance and the time apart is, you are still connected and you're not lonely which is ideal because being lonely in a relationship is something that will ultimately tear you apart if it goes on for too long. Oh, that causes so That's many problems. Divorced. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm an eight ball. You know the magic eight ball that you shake and then you yeah. turn it around and you got an answer? Yeah. I need the question. I need to okay. know. <laughs> I need your magic eight ball question so that I can give you specific steps that are going to get you to where you want to be. Okay. Um, I tend to now, because I'm so picky, I tend to overanalyze everything. Before I used to not care. I would ignore red flags. I would jump into things quickly. I would not think about things. Now I'm so deliberate about everything. I, I tend to overanalyze and I, I question everything and I probably see things that I could overlook, but I won't. I, I like I said, I'm, I'm very picky. So I, I tend to overanalyze too much now and I don't know when, when to let go and I don't know how to stop thinking about it. What, you know, did I do this right? Is this the right person? Should I even go on a date? I've, I've made so many dates and I've never gone on them because I questioned myself and I said, no, he's not perfect enough. No, he, he doesn't meet my qualifications. So I'm not going to go. So how do I stop doing that? Uh, yeah. So I, 
Maggie. Sorry, that whack, whack, wacky here is my dog's tail smacking on the floor because Colleen is here. Hi, everybody. <laughs> She's making Maggie happy. All right, so what you're what you're talking about, I, I would you call it, uh, and, and let me use this word, overly critical. Like you, you, yes. you pick apart little details. Yeah, 100%. Okay. About me, uh, about what I'm doing in it, as well as them. Yes. Okay. Oh, and um, can I give you like an example of what popped into uh, my head in terms of uh, how you might be overly critical of the person in front of you? Sure. Um, yeah. So for instance, I worked with a client recently and she would say that before she met somebody in person, she'd always have a, a, a video call with them so that she could see what was behind them. She, she could see the background. <laughs> and it Dude, I way. look at pictures. Yeah. <laughs> so, and it's her sneak way to figure out whether or not this person is too messy. And, and she'll eliminate yeah. them if the background is too messy because she's like, ah, oh, you know, like, I don't, I don't want to be somebody's mother. I don't want to clean up after them. Yeah. And, and I said, okay, so that's one of the things that you have to give some allowance for because my husband, when I first met him, like he was a bachelor, you know, he'd been divorced for years and his bedroom was not clean it was dusty there was stuff on top of the dresser it says bed wasn't made right if I had dismissed him for that then I wouldn't be with somebody who you know literally sends me thought images that I pick up because our connection is so strong and who feeds my love language unlike anybody I've ever met in my entire life um so there's there's a piece of heaven that I would have given up if I had been critical about some details. And okay. this is one of the things that I say to women is there will be training involved. It's, and, okay. and in some parts of this, it's gonna feel like toilet training sometimes. So having this expectation that you're gonna get somebody fully formed is unrealistic and it will make you eliminate I know. a lot of people. I know. How do you know then? How do I know? It's about the flaws. Are... And I think it's about like how much of the flaws you can actually end up loving versus the stuff that drives you bonkers. Because everybody has flaws and you can't forget yeah. that there's things in your life or that you do or that he sees or something about your kids or whatever that he's going to be like, that drives me crazy, but she is so worth it. Yeah. So it's, I, I think it's a two way street. Like it's give and take. If you, if you're expecting a guy to be like this, you're never going to get, there's like, I know. so much life. Right. So, and that's why you're putting yourself in this rigid box and being so critical of yourself too. It, could that be, could, could it be that you're putting such a high expectation on him that you're, you're feeling the need to elevate yourself beyond a reasonable place too? I, I'm very hard on myself. I have very high expectations of myself. So that's why I, I tend to put them on somebody else as well, because I think, well, if I'm trying this hard or if I can do this, why can't you kind of, and I, I do know that's unrealistic as well. Um, well, and I do know. I, yeah. I think there's 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 always balance, right? Um, right. You know, so so like in a relationship, like I stopped fighting with my husband because I started using a scale mentally. Like I'd be yeah, like, yeah, I know. Okay, well, I can, you didn't do this yeah. nice thing for me, and it's like you're in the dog pile. And then I go, okay. My question was to me was, what am I not asking forgiveness for? And, and trust me, I came up with something really fast. And so, you know, he'd come home and I have nothing to say to him except, hi, baby, I love you. Because every time I thought about he's in the shit house, I go, yeah, but I'm, you know, here's what I'm not doing. Yeah. And oh, I know. So, yeah. Sorry. Oh, I'm so, just saying, you know, I, I've been there. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you can, you can also do that with effort, right? So you might you might say to yourself, I'm putting in this specific effort done in this specific way, like X number of phone calls or X number of texts. And, and you, you might want that him to be reciprocal in that exact same way. But if you're looking for the exact same effort back, you might be missing other efforts that he's doing. 
I know my ex, I don't like to talk bad about exes, but I found that he put in no effort. Didn't it, I, I guess I had such a bad marriage and that's such a bad example that I, I, I've gone the complete opposite way now. So I'm, I'm struggling to find that balance of what I will accept and what I will let go and what's okay and what's not okay. Yeah, completely understandable. And, and that's part of the anxiety that we tend to go through when we're going, you know, from one relationship to the next, no matter how much space of time has been yeah. in between. If we haven't shed the past and reduced our anxiety about the future, then we're going to keep vomiting that forward onto the people that are coming into our lives. Um, do you do any kind of meditation, any kind of stress reduction exercises? Um, I go to church all the time. Uh, I pray a lot. God's in my life. That's, that's, that's another thing. I, it's really important to me that my partner feels the same way. So, yeah. yeah. Say yes to goodness. That's my prayer. Um, <laughs> yes, it's true. And, and prayer is meditation. Um, like I, I do meditation almost on a daily basis. And there are points where you know like i'm literally like this and i'm saying thank you for what i have because yeah. this is communication and somebody's listening because they're giving me when i say you know <laughs> here give me what i need and they yeah. actually are putting it right in the palm of my hands so i get that big time when you're doing your prayers do you ever ask for peace and calm oh yes and i am i am not it's just I'm very calm person and it, it's only the relationship area of my life that I've been struggling, which is kind of why I don't date. I really haven't. Uh, I, I just don't go out on dates because I feel like I don't want to be in a relationship again, just because my marriage was so awful. I'm, I'm scared, I guess. I don't want to be in another relationship and I'm scared of the person that I'm going to pick because he was great when I met him. Or so I thought, and then red flags I missed, and I'm just scared to do it again. And I'm yeah, happy, so I don't really like have any motivation. You already broke the cycle. Like, it sounds like you're, you're already past that point where you, because you know how people go through cycles and they date the same people, and it's like over and over. Yes, and you, yeah. You're past that. Like, you already know yeah. what you want and you don't want. You already love yourself. You know, you're independent. Like, you have so many good qualities. Happy. Yeah, like, do you think that you'd actually end up with somebody that's, like, down here while you've already risen up here? Because it doesn't sound like if you went out and found someone that you're going to find a guy that's here. Like, no. you're not even vibing in that area anymore. I won't. More than likely, I would not give him a chance because I probably wouldn't go out with him in the first place. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, he would and, yeah, and, and these, this online dating, I do not like online dating, but I find when I'm out, I either don't notice guys or guys don't approach you anymore. Uh, it's not a thing. Women are out, they can go on Tinder, they can go on Plenty of Fish. They're not going to approach me when I'm out with my girlfriends or in a grocery store or, or any of those places that guys would normally, you'd normally meet somebody because they don't have to. I, I find... I don't have guys, I've had guys approach me, but not as, not very often. Yeah, and there's, there's actually, and I mean, like, we're, we're a little bit older now. Uh, I'm in my <laughs> 40s. Um, yeah. And so the men that are in our dating range, they're not the same age anymore either. And no. often what's going on is they're having this once bitten, twice shy kind of thing happening where yes, I've noticed that. they've been told so many times, no, sorry, I'm seeing somebody, that they start looking at women across the room and doing that calculation on their own, like, oh, she's, you know, she's attractive, right? And that's why he, he even thought about coming up to you in the first place is because you're attractive. And then his next thought is, oh, she's probably got a partner, I'm not even going to try, which is why they're not coming up to us anymore. But we've uh -huh. been letting them know for a long time that we're receptive to them, except in this culture. Now in our culture, the only time that we're letting them know is when we're swiping online. And yes. we have this yeah. expectation that, you know, men who are men 
those ones, those are the ones that are going to cross the room and tap us on the shoulder and let us know that they're interested. But here's what you need to realize. Dropping the handkerchief started happening a long time ago. Women letting men know that the door was open for them to step through and start the chase was happening when we were wearing like poofy dresses and <laughs> chapeaus and parasols and dropping our handkerchief to let him know if he picked it up and gave it back to us, then he had a chance. Yeah, and I have approached people and I will message them first. I'm fine with that, but I, I'm at the point where, as you know, I'm happy. So if they, if they reciprocate, reciprocate, great, but if they don't pursue me, I lose interest because I don't you need know? him in my life. So, you know, I, I need him to be fairly aggressive and, and pursue me more. Yeah. So I just haven't found Are that yet. Are you okay with, with at least opening that door? When you see somebody cross the room, when you get that little skip inside your chest, are you okay with crossing the room and, and tapping him on the shoulder and starting a short conversation, then giving him your contact info and then seeing if he'll come and chase after you? I'd be very happy doing that. Um, I don't go out a lot because I will go with, out with my friends. I'm in school and I work and I just, I don't have time. But if it was in a setting, um, you know, a social setting where I'm with friends or, or there's a mutual friend or, or something that we're going to together, I would definitely, but I also don't give out my number. That's one thing I've never done and I won't do. So that's a little bit tricky if, if, we, if we're not in a network together or if we don't have mutual friends. I just, yeah. I won't give out my number. So I don't know how to get around that. Email? Yes, yeah, so I advise women <laughs> to actually create a, like a new email account um, so that okay. they're not, they're not infecting, you know, an old, like an email account that they're attached to and, and they just don't want to get any negativity in there. I say, create a brand new email account that you're going to give to these people specifically for that purpose. Of okay. Letting that That's person know when you feel that skip inside, because I really believe in intuition. I really believe in guidance and I really yeah. believe that we get messages and I, I, I do want you to be open to crossing the room and tapping a stranger on the shoulder when you feel that skip, but protecting yourself just in case he is a douchebag. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's what I'm a little, yeah, I know you can block their number. I know that's fine, but I'm just, I don't like to text people or I, I'm not, I'm not a very chatty person. So I just tend to not like if, unless you're important in my life, you're not in my phone. That's about it. Yeah. But are you okay with that, with that new email account? Yeah. Like with that. But, so stuff. will guys message through email? Like, would they be open to that? Cause that seems a little different. Well, here's the thing. If that, that little sensation that I talk about, that spark, that jump, if yeah. he felt the same thing, you giving him that email address, is like a godsend to him and he's like oh my god now i get to get a hold of her and we can maybe meet up and maybe she'll be my girlfriend one day right um oh and he'll be impressed that you made the first move boom right oh, if he's the right kind of man because here's like like remember the one you're looking for is like you right so you <laughs> are says, yes you are a go-getter you open your own goddamn doors Seize yeah. the opportunity. Seize the opportunity. By the okay. way, you know, once you start dating. But you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, like you, right. you, yeah. you, you create your opportunities and you follow your gut and you are brave enough to deal with the outcome of that. And you're okay with rejection. You're, you're, you're just okay. You know what I mean? Like, you know how yeah. to go get what you want in the world and you're okay with how things roll. And the man you're looking for is like that. So you coming up to him yeah. and, and being you, and, and it's going to be a short conversation because girlfriend, I don't have time. I just, I saw you cross no, I had to come over. I had to let you know that I want to see you again. Let's get together for a coffee. Here's my email address. You know, if you want, get a hold of me, talk to you later and off you go. Right. It is that, 
fast. I call it a hit and run flirting technique. And then you just see what happens. And I tell you, girlfriend, you see 10 guys in one day that make you have that little skip. You give out that email address 10 times in that day. I don't know. And okay. Another question I have is I, as you know, I'm very particular. And I also don't believe in you know, the feelings are great, to, but I also know feelings fade. So yeah. I would like to meet somebody with mutual goals and um, mutual values and all of that. How do I find all of that out about somebody quickly without asking a billion questions and sounding like I'm interviewing them? I know. Guess where I'm going to go? Do where are you going to go? Okay, what are you going to say okay. first? I was going to say, well, where are you meeting them? And who, like, are you meeting them through friends? Or are you meeting them at a location that uh, is somewhere that you regularly attend, like church? Um, so it's all about, it's kind of like location, location, location. At a bookstore, right. like somewhere, wherever you're interested in is where I would start seeking somebody else. That's, that's my advice. And. Um, okay. Yeah. And. When would you kiss? When would that first kiss happen? Oh, okay. That another question. I'm fine with a three month kiss. I think that's a great idea. As a matter of fact, my question is, um, sex. I think you should wait a long time to have sex as well. I, I think it's very, very important to wait. I, I think that three month thrill is perfect. Yeah. So sex, whenever you want, um, whenever you want, like I have, I have clients like you who are very godly and you know, they're, they're very happy with the three month rule, but they're like, I don't want sex before marriage. And I'm like, you do yeah. what makes you happy and you find the man who wants to make you happy. Um, so when it comes to sex, okay. to do whatever you want. I, I've had you people who, when they have that first kiss on that three month anniversary, they go home and don't leave for a week because for, <laughs> for, for, okay, I wasn't like, expecting that. <laughs> It's no kissing yeah. and no sleepovers, right? So you have that time and distance at the end of the day to rethink about the day and go, okay, well, were there any red flags that, that in the moment were overshadowed by the next moment kind of thing? So, it, it you know, three okay. months, no kissing, taking out your phone saying, you know, like on that first, uh, you know, you can call it date, you can call it get together, you can call it whatever you want. I, I say usually mm -hmm. when, you know, instead of a date, instead of an interview, here's answering your question here. How do you not interview a person? You just don't do yeah. it. You don't sit across from them <laughs> and just okay. and just drill them with questions. You go for a walk and you can ask a lot of questions on a walk mm -hmm. because you're side by side and you're not intrusive. You're not in their face. Right. Yeah. Questions. Okay. Yeah. So is yeah. there any tips or tricks to that, to getting that information out without sounding like I'm playing 20 questions with them? <laughs> hey, wait a second. Does that, oh shit, it's backwards. Okay. So <laughs> in my book, No More Assholes, um, there's mm -hmm. actually a bunch of questions that I call it peeling his onion. It's really getting through the layers of who he is. And, and it's, it's kind of finding out who he is at his core by getting him to reveal how he was when he was younger, who his role models are, like really okay. digging into what formed him. Because mm -hmm. the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. Very so, true. Very true. I, yeah. I, that makes sense. That's good. Yeah. Okay. So, so ask, ask these questions that are in here. They're very revealing about his character and his story. And with that, you can piece together who he is. But this is where the no kissing for three month rule really, really helps you out. Because again, people can say anything. So men to yeah. people say what is going to impress you first, whether or not it's a lie. And they're going to repeat that because they really do want to get you in bed. They are biologically designed to want to yeah, yeah. win you so they can get you. They're the seed planter, the designed to plant that seed any time of the day because 
when we're ready, when we're fertile, when we say, come on, it's time to get it on, there's a biological thing going on saying, make a baby. So because we cycle, they're designed to really want to get that seed in us. And so this no kissing for three months means that you can ask a question more than once and see if the answer differs from one point to the next. Good idea. And see if who you learn about in the first month is the same person or better in the second month. Are they the same person or better in the third month? Is the honesty consistent? Are the stories consistent? Is the evolution of your relationship going up? Because the more you find out about him, the more you like him. Because as mm -hmm. you said, feelings will fade. And that rush, yeah. there's a chemical rush in the beginning stage that is triggered by newness. So oxytocin happens when you touch. Yeah. And it makes you forget. Uh, dopamine is what happens when we smile at each other and it's the same chemical your brain releases when you snort cocaine. It is super rewarding and it makes you want more. So even if you're not kissing, which kissing adds phenylethylamine, which takes those chemicals and jacks them through the roof and makes you completely oblivious to reality. Even if you're not introducing that chemical that will just make you a freaking idiot for three months, you still are a little bit of an idiot for three months. Well, not even, you know, for close to three months, yeah. but because you're not hyperjacking it with the kiss, you're, you can still maintain some objectivity of the situation. So again, no kissing, no sleepovers means you go home, you think about these encounters with this person and you piece together things one after another over the course of time if this person makes it to that three month anniversary and you like mm -hmm. him more after three months than you did in that initial rush phase, you know this one's a keeper. You know this one is worth kissing and, and starting something that you're gonna call a relationship because up to three months, you're just, you're seeing each other. And no kissing yeah. means you're not wasting any time because you might give your, your email address to somebody and and start seeing them and then see someone else give him your email address or somebody might approach you out of the blue and say, Hey, let's go out. And you can say yes, because you're not kissing, which means you're not committed to anybody, which means you're not tied into anyone until you know who they are. So is that was another question I had. Um, I'm not really a multiple dater because I don't have time, but yeah. if I were, and, and I have before, um, but how do you know when to stop talking to somebody or you know, uh, when it's okay to continue to mess with somebody and grow out with somebody? Is three months, is that what you're saying is a good, good idea, whether you know whether you want to be with them? Yeah, I, like three months is, is a good like if somebody is starting off right, you know, and Maggie sit, my dog is whacking. Um, my, <laughs> my tripod, it's okay, Maggie. Um, okay, so what three months does is it's kind of like, it's a not too soon, it's a not too late time frame. So if for whatever reason you wanna stop seeing somebody before three months is up, then you stop. Um, it's, it's really just that simple. If the feelings aren't there, and I mean, like, if he's, if he's all good on paper, do mm -hmm. try and give it the whole three months because, you know, again, there's that flux and flow, right? Like, my husband, right. it took months and months for me to actually even become attracted to him. But it yeah. developed because... I, I, you know, I said one time, oh, you look 10 years younger if you shaved your goatee. Well, the next time I saw him, he shaved his goatee. And I was like, oh, dude, Aww. you look good. And then, <laughs> you know, I, I was vegan yeah. and he went vegan and he lost his Buddha belly. And I was like, oh, dude, you're, look, you're looking better. So that brings <laughs> us back to the, like the flaws mm -hmm. and yeah. like not people like right off the bat kind of giving them time to improve because guys will also follow your lead. They do, right? And here's the thing, the one who wants to impress you is listening to the words you say. This is why it's important to, to actually give some time and, and do communicate your wants, your desires. Um, he's listening for clues for how to make you happy enough to be with him. So this is why I say to women, you know, have standards before you start dating because you're gonna yes. drop those 
And if he's not that yeah. person already, because you may need a guy, a selfish short-term thinker who's just looking for the right woman to man up for. And so if you have, if you're a woman and you have standards for a man by your yeah. side and you're letting him know this is the man who's going to be with me, this guy might decide he wants to be the man you need. And so he's going to pick up on those clues and he's going to start altering himself physically, behaviorally, mm -hmm. in order to be the one that you're looking for because he's looking for you. Okay. Um, another question. Um, I, because I talked so much, we were in counseling every week for two years. We talked and talked and talked and talked to death. I do not want to have the conversations in relationships, you know, at the three months or any time. I'm, I'm really struggling with, I, you know, if I do like somebody, I don't want to talk about things anymore. Um, <laughs> Actions. <laughs> For sure. Right? Yeah. Roses. Yeah. Little notes. Like, there's so many ways. Oh, to I like talk that. Things, okay. Right? Like, yeah. That's a good like, idea. You don't have to talk. I mean, body language, like, so many but the, the the important conversations, you know, of um, like, let's say I found somebody and I said, I, I, I'm starting to like you. And, you know, let's see where this goes. I just, I find I want everything. I don't want to have those important conversations. I, I don't know why. I just feel like if I'm going to be dating, I want to enjoy it. I, I find that it's a lot of work. I guess I don't want to put too much work you into don't want it. it. You don't want a hard relationship. You just want it to be easy, which it should yeah. be. And yes. you'll find that. You'll, to you'll okay. totally find that and, it'll be, and it will be easy. And I've been in your shoes and like, look at me now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, True. Do you prepare though for, to be clear and to guide? Um, you know, so, so, what I mean by that is, is for instance, like the first, the first time that you have a date with somebody, um, mm -hmm. you know, I say, state your intent and, and state how you're going to get there. So your intent is I'm, I'm sitting here with you because I'm done my playtime. I'm looking for a long-term relationship and then let him respond to that. I, you know, say, what about you? So that you can find out right then and there. Yeah. Are you both on the same table? Are you both there because you're looking for a long-term relationship? If he says, yeah, me too, great, proceed. If he's like, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Then what that means is he's not ready to plug in yet. And so this is one of those people that you're gonna keep at arm's length because he's not even sure if he's looking for a long-term relationship. Mm -hmm. But you state your intent, right. I'm not play it. I'm looking for something long-term. What about you? Confirm that he's on the same page. And then you let him know, I'm going to use a method to get there. And it's no kissing for three months because I want to make sure that I'm not clouding myself with these chemicals that are going to keep me from seeing reality and missing red flags and, and get me in the wrong relationship because I didn't understand what I should have understood about the person sitting across from me before I kissed and committed it's with true. that kiss. Um, so you, you know, I, I understand that you don't want to, you don't want to just talk all <laughs> the time. And I completely get that. Um, that's the, one of the great bonuses about a real man is there are fewer issues and they like silence. And if you find somebody oh, that, uh, that's is, great. Is, likes themselves and loves themselves they're not going to sit around and want to talk all day because trust me i i hate talking i hate <laughs> feelings yeah. like don't like yeah <laughs> you know, i'm very like okay i'm over it i'll bitch a bit and then i'm like i'm done and that's kind of the way yeah. my relationship works because i can't i can't function like that like i have enough drama with the kids that the last thing i need is to have somebody barking at me right yeah so, exactly like yeah. it, it can totally happen. It just depends on the person. And if you already set that tone at the very beginning, then that's mm -hmm. the way it is. You know what I mean? Like you can totally have fun on dates and do things you love. And like, I never thought, for example, I'd be this person that loves hiking. And now I am. And now 
I'm right. Like that's what oh, I, we I should hide. Yeah. So now okay. I have somebody that's willing to do that stuff with me and we both have dogs and it just, it worked out. Right. So okay. it's totally possible. You yeah. just have Good. to open your mind and yeah. be willing to take yeah. a chance <laughs> on somebody that you don't think that you're going to hit it off with. Because honestly, like you never know there's hidden gems there's so many, there's hidden gems in our singles group. Yes. There's tons of them. And you I know, know. When we have her event, the guys that show up to her event oh, God. on February 12th are the guys oh, that I'm are there. <laughs> are, you, are you coming? To the oh, I'll, I'll make sure I'm there. Yeah. Good, good, Definitely. good. Because, uh, so, I mean, men have bought tickets and I have um, checked them out. Yeah. This, yeah. We got some good stuff coming. So okay. trust me, the people who are showing up to hear me talk are the ones who are serious about finding a relationship and doing it the right way and not yes. rushing, not rushing, because that's what I'm all about. It's about taking your time and rising above your biological impulses so you can use your logical mind to get that spiritual connection you're looking for. And that that's awesome. honestly society's fault. Like It's these, a cultural thing. Like these women think that the way to get a guy is through their body and it's like, no, no. Yeah. no. no. And then the girls that are respectful and you know they're the ones that hate on us because it's like, well, what has she got that I don't? Well, you know what? I'm sorry, I don't put out. It's, yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a cultural issue. It has been infused in our society because all of the media, it's like boy meets girl, passionate kiss, romance, everything works out in the end. I know. Yeah. That. Yeah. But that, you, I mean, we know. I've been we through the all been there. Right? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's tough to have a vetting process, and that's not sexy in movies and commercials and TV. So of course they don't do that, but you know, I pull us back into what is natural for us. If our cave women ancestors had not had a vetting process, if they hadn't sat back and observed behavior before choosing a mate, you and I wouldn't be here today because <laughs> you know, stupidity sure. doesn't create more stupidity in, yeah. in a place where there's no hospitals and no buildings and survival hangs by a thread. You have to be the smartest of the species. Obviously, our cave mamas, we're picking the right partners. We're just not doing that today because our cultural story is meet somebody, feel the chemicals, kiss on the first, second, or third date, and then see where it goes. And it's looking for love. In the it's rocks. silly. It's also feeling I, that's, like no. you need to love yourself. You're already yeah. there. So your, yeah. your battles halfway done to be honest with you it is so big <laughs> huge 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 this is this is going to be easier than you think we just got to kind of get those fears out of the way and just open you up a little bit more to the process um there's there's some okay. things that i would have you do but i just i kind of want to stop it here and then we can do okay. like a different live sometime and get you doing some homework that's going to really fine tune your your antenna because i really believe that you know, what we're thinking is, is what we're putting mm -hmm. in our path. And I like to guide women into thought processes that put okay. the right people looking for their path. And I see it work so many times and I freaking love it. And she's gorgeous okay. and she's happy and she's a great okay. patch. A hundred percent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. That'd be great. Keep your standards. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. So Kayla. Okay. Kayla. Kyla. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was here for a reason. <laughs> right. I knew it. <laughs> did we help you today? Yes, you did actually. You helped a lot. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. So so yeah. All right. We're gonna do this again. Let's let's see you and I like let's let's kind of do like another one where we're going to Definitely. talk about uh, really getting you specifically knowing what it is that you're looking for and, and sort of pulling away more of those fears because I really find that with clarity is, is okay. more certainty. And with that certainty, that, that fear of vomiting the past into your future goes away. Okay. That sounds Yay. great. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for doing this with us. Oh, you're yes. welcome. Thank you. You're so, welcome. Yeah. Thank you for being here.
I love Anytime. I love this girl. I love her too. She's awesome. I'm gonna take She's amazing everywhere. <laughs> All right, thank you, Kayla. Thank you guys for watching. Uh oh, Justin Bennett. Okay. And I will talk to you soon. And you know I love you. Everybody, don't forget, go on Amazon or go to my website, go get my books, you know, CanadasDatingCoach.com. I have everything for you. I've got a YouTube channel. I've got all these meditation tracks that are going to reduce your anxiety. I've got tons of free advice on my YouTube channel. So come find life me. coach. Not just dating. Trust me. She is a life coach. I yes. answer a lot of questions. Okay. So much love for you. Thank you, guys. Bye.